Your favorite semiconductor stock, Intel, is trading at next 12 months P.E. ratio of 31 and next 24 months P.E. ratio of 19. While this is not my favorite semiconductor stock, I do believe if it executes correctly in the following markets that I will discuss in this video, Intel stock can be expectations and provide great returns to investors. Welcome. For those not familiar, my name is Jose Naharo, and I spend way too much time reading about semiconductors and AI. But thanks to that, my education and work experience, I believe I have created the number one semiconductor podcast for investors. So let's get started with today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so as I am recording today's episode, Intel's currently sitting at $43.51. It is up about 1% after hours, and the company has a market cap of $183 billion. P.E. ratio forward, which is the next 12 months, is sitting at 31.93. P.E. ratio forward one year is sitting at 18.64. Now, this stock has been pretty much a lagger the past few years due to the huge decline we have seen in revenue for Intel. While a lot of other semiconductor companies have been growing, Intel unfortunately has been declining. We can see in 2020 and 2021 when we kind of had that peak of working from home, of education being online. We did see a huge growth in sales um, in kind of the PC market, which overall took this company's review uh, revenue to over 70 billion. We can see in 2021, it was over 74.7 billion. But now if we kind of take a closer look at the trailing 12 months, which was the end of 2023, about two years from its peak, Revenue has declined to $54.23 billion because we are, we've seen numerous things over inventory correction happening from that PC explosion that we saw due to working from home. We've also seen a decrease in revenue from other segments that the company has exited and more importantly, the weakness in its data center market. Now, I want to take a closer look at what analysts are expecting in forms of revenue for the next 12 months, the next 24 months, and the next 36 months. And we can see for the next 12 months, Intel uh, analysts that follow Intel on average expect roughly $57.5 billion in revenue. That would be roughly a $3 billion growth from this year of 2023, which I personally believe was a year of a lot of weakness due to numerous things impacting the overall inventory correction. So I do believe revenue can actually be beaten here in the next 12 months. Now, if we take a closer look at the next fiscal year, which is the next 24 months, months, analysts are expecting around $64 billion. That's an extra $7 billion there that actually seems a little bit more possible. We have a lot of things like Intel really entering into the AI market with their Gaudi 3 and maybe their Falcon Shores, which can obviously see some boost in revenue. Obviously, we're going to continue to see a nice increase in PC shipments, and I'll showcase that chart in a bit. Um, but 64, in my opinion, is definitely possible. But but if they even push more into their foundry business, like we're going to talk about, I do believe Intel can actually be expectations. Now, for the next two fiscal years ahead, that's actually 36 months from here, um, Intel is expected to grow another $7 billion to 70.6. So we can see even in the next three years, while Intel has numerous opportunities that I'm going to take a closer look at, most analysts don't believe that this company will actually grow to the revenue of the peak we saw in 2020 and 2021 and i want to say while well, maybe we might not see the same revenue in the pc market i do believe there's a lot and a lot of tailwinds in different industries that can definitely help boost the revenue and i personally believe that intel will eventually beat that cap that it beat in 2021 and 2022 of roughly 74 75 um, billion dollars in annual revenue so right off the bat, um, these estimations, in my opinion, I do believe can be beaten if, if Intel focuses in the markets that I'm going to talk about real quick. Another thing that we are seeing is Intel right now is investing a lot in their foundry business and in their most 10, most recent 10 K report, which was their annual report. They did represent a loss in free cash flow of roughly $12 billion. And one of the things we are going to see is a lot of this money is doing to the investment in manufacturing capabilities of their foundry business. But this company is going to get a lot and a lot of money from subsidies 
opportunities all over the world that I do believe can obviously help offset a lot of this decline. I mean, if we take a closer look right now, I recently did a video where I talked about some recent news and Intel is expected to get over $10 billion in subsidies and loan packages from the United States and the US CHIPS Act. So if they just get those $10 billion in subsidies, we can kind of see that that negative free cash flow from 2023 would be pretty much to some extent negative two billion dollars not including any other types of tax incentives or other types of incentives that the chips act might give so we can definitely see how government subsidies are going to be a very important play here and we're going to continue to see that not only here in the united states but globally all around the world all right so let's start off with the foundry business the company is expected to have a foundry event on wednesday february 21st make sure to stay tuned and like it just talked about right intel is receiving a lot and a lot of power of subsidies for building manufacturing plants as they are expanding all over the world from United States to Europe, Ireland, Germany, um, and the list goes on and on. And during their most recent earnings, the company shared a lot of great insight. They mentioned that they have taped out more than 75 ecosystem and customer test chips. IFS, which is their foundry service, already has more than 50 test chips in the pipeline across 2024 and 2025, and most of those are going to be into the Intel A manufacturing node. And for those that are not familiar, Intel 18A still has not been released. So it's still in kind of that production getting ready for production and manufacturing readiness so it is important to know that a lot of the business that they are winning is going to be in the 18a foundry customers and that usually takes numerous coders to materialize because it's still an evolving market and the great thing here in forms of their intel 18a business for 2023 this company was only hoping to have one customer but now they have four customers in the intel 18a uh, so that obviously bolts really well well for their manufacturing revenue that's expected to come in the upcoming years. One of those big wins was actually a significant high performance computing customer, which obviously bodes well with a lot of AI solutions and AI chips happening right now. So we are seeing that the Intel Foundry business, they're getting customers, which is great news. They, even though they're getting customers though, this revenue is not expected to kind of materialize for some time. The other thing that they are doing here in the foundry business is Intel actually has a lot of old equipment and they are doing some great things to increase their return on investments. And one of the things is with those old equipments, they are making partnerships. Some recent partnerships was with United Microelectronics. Another one was with uh, Tower Semiconductor where Intel to some extent either manufactures for them, lends out their manufacturing plants and they get paid, right? So it's another way for them to increase that foundry revenue on equipment that might be outdated maybe not outdated but not but not but might not be needed for advanced chip manufacturing where intel is moving on so i do believe one way intel can really be expectations in the future is if their foundry business continues to go strong if they continue to win customers here and there's no real delays in this market right because if they do see delays then most likely a lot of the players that are putting money here for intel 18a are going to go to its competitor either tsmc or samsung so first off the bat is the foundry business right now it's looking like it's moving in the right direction but we still have to see how that intel 3 and intel 18a node come out in the upcoming quarters now within the foundry business there is this special process called advanced packaging and it's not necessarily the packaging of putting a chip in the box or something like that but it's pretty much putting the chips together and this is a company that and intel has mentioned that this is an industry that they have seen a huge huge growth in overall opportunity during the quarter the most recent quarter they captured three additional advanced packaging design wins which brings their total to five in 2023 and with the majority of revenue starting in 2025 so again we are seeing that hey a lot of these wins that the company is seeing in the foundry business we hear about them and some investors might be wondering hey jose why aren't we seeing this in their revenue numbers the main reason is it takes time for this to materialize here we can see for this advanced packaging is going to start in 2025 and again right now the ai chip market is very very supply constraint due to advanced packaging solutions intel definitely has some interesting advanced packaging solutions i'm going to post
post some pictures here so you guys can see them as I am talking about advanced packaging. But Intel, with the overall AI market, this is definitely a growth opportunity for them. They do mention that they're going to focus on mainly advanced packaging because that technology is something that makes them different from other players and they tend to have high margins in this space. So again, the business that they're winning here is going to take time to materialize. But overall, this is definitely a way that Intel can beat the overall expectations in the upcoming quarters. Uh, so the Foundry business, I am very excited, not only for the Foundry side, but the advanced packaging side because of this numerous AI potential that we're seeing right now. Now, I do want to take a closer look at two other markets. The first was the Foundry. The second was advanced packaging. But before we go there, guys, I do want to say thank you so much for the support. We kind of blew past 30,000. We're at 35,000 subs right now. Let's see if we can hit 36,000 before this Foundry event, which is on Wednesday, and before NVIDIA's earnings. That would be insane. We're about 300 away, so make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Finally, if you want a special offer, check out fool.com slash Jose. If you want to support the channel in another way, a great offer can be found there. Now, market number three, and I actually have five markets. I keep saying four, but I have five markets. Um, market number three is AI accelerators. And right now, when we think of AI accelerators, the first person we think about is NVIDIA with their H100, and they're going to dominate. I don't believe Intel by any means is going to find anything that will kind of really take a heavy, heavy amount of market share from NVIDIA. The second one we have is AMD with their MI300X, and that's getting some kind of uh, attention. But one that doesn't get attention is Intel. They do have the Gaudi 3 chip. In the upcoming, in this year, they do have Gaudi 3, which is in the lab right now, and they do mention it's showing great health and performance. And next year, they're going to see Falcon Shores. So I do believe this is a market that maybe analysts aren't really putting much attention in Intel and not giving it that AI boom like all the other companies but it definitely has the potential here i mean their gaudi 2 ai accelerator continues to demonstrate price performance leadership compared to most popular gpus we've seen kind of comparisons to the a100 sometimes even to the h100 uh they do mention that their ai accelerated pipeline for 2024 grew double digits sequentially and is now well above two billion dollars and growing and they recently increased their supply for both gaudi 2 and Gaudi 3 to support the growing customer demand and they expect meaningful revenue acceleration throughout the year of 2024 and I do believe we're going to see even more growth in 2025 for this AI market. So again, I'm not saying that they're going to take major market share from Nvidia, but I do believe very similar to AMD if they just grab the breadcrumbs from the breadcrumbs from Nvidia's um, scraps, then that can definitely be a huge boost in revenue for a lot of these players, uh, and this can obviously help in, in, in Intel beat analyst expectations. So the AI accelerator market, I feel everybody forgets for Intel, but it's definitely a winning opportunity for them. Next, I want to take a closer look at the PC totable addressable market, and I did mention that in 2020 and 2021 we kind of saw that peak of shipments, right? 2021 it was roughly 350 million plus of PC shipments sh uh, shipped globally. Um, we are in 2023 where it was the weakest. 2024 is expected to grow roughly 8% to 267 million. In 2025, we expect to see another growth here. So obviously, I do believe this kind of revenue push can help Intel be in a lot of these expectations and we see a nice boost in revenue. While I do want to say that maybe PC shipments are not going to be as high as we've seen them in the past, I do believe average selling prices for a lot of their semiconductor solutions are increasing. So they can make a lot more revenue per less products because the overall in it technology is improving i mean in 2024 at the end of 2024 they kind of ushered this age of aipc in the cpu market i'm gonna say the aipc market was always ushered by nvidia and their gpus but intel did announce their intel core ultra which is kind of their process solution that has a cpu a gpu and an npu for ai solutions and again when you're putting a lot of technology together you are able to increase your average selling price so again i do believe this can obviously help boost the amount of revenue 
even though PC shipments is nowhere near what we saw in 2020 and 2021. They believe to kind of ship roughly 40 million AI PCs in 2024 alone with more than 230 designs from ultra-thin PCs to handheld gaming devices. And they mentioned, hey, look, we're going to continue to release new solutions to maintain market share here. They do have the next generation coming out later this year in 2024, Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake, which is going to increase their overall AI performance. And in 2025, they already have Panther Lake, which will grow their AI performance even more. So if the AI market is really here to stay into the PC and the consumer market, this can be a nice push for the PC total addressable space and can obviously help this company be in client revenue. So that's going to be market number four. The fifth market that I have here is the server market. So one thing that we have seen is AMD continues to take a nice amount of market share from Intel here in the PC server. But in quarter four, they did mention that their service business experienced solid sequential growth and they're consistent with market share, which they believe is flat with quarter three. So it does seem like Intel at the moment might not be bleeding in market share to AMD right now. And they're doing this by announcing numerous new CPUs. I mean, last year they announced in 2022, at the end of 2022, they announced their fourth generation C on Sapphire Rapids. Here in the fifth, uh, in the end of 2023, they did announce their fifth generation C on, which obviously improved their AI inferencing performance. Uh, and they do mention that a lot of their previous generation demand was driven by AI demand. So a third of all fourth gen Xeon processors were driven by AI solutions. And in the upcoming year, we are already expected to see Intel with their upcoming solutions, Sierra Forest, Grand Eye Rapids, and then Clearwater Forest next year. So they are kind of showcasing this overall strength in their CPU market for the server side, which can obviously help hold back market share here and the average selling prices of server cpus continues to go up as you tend to see more cores and this can obviously help boost revenue as well so the way that things are looking right now i don't believe that there's a clear line that intel is gonna definitely get it right but there's also not a clear line that intel is going to get it wrong so that's why i mentioned earlier on this episode if intel actually gets it right in all these markets this pe forward one year of 18.64 in my opinion, is very, very cheap. And if you do believe that Intel can get it right in all these markets, again, there's no clear line. I want to say in most of these markets, Intel has probably a little bit edge of getting things ahead, uh, of getting things right right now. But I don't want. I, I don't say that gap is 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 too huge to really agree with it at the moment. Um, but if Intel beats in these again i do believe intel can actually be a great performer and like i mentioned at the beginning of this episode intel is by far nowhere near my favorite semiconductor company even though i know how much you guys enjoy this overall stock 